Hi friends, Hunter Fisher, Trapper Trader, Guide Scout and Interpreter and Country Cook Steve Hall here again with another great recipe you're really going to like today. Now I know you guys like to hunt and you like to fish. So I'm going to show you a fish recipe, actually fish, homemade hush puppies and homemade tartar sauce. Kind of like three recipes in one. I got a bowl of whole catfish here. Now anybody can cook catfish fillets, that's pretty simple. But a problem that I run into traveling around the country is everybody north of the Mason-Dixon line cooks a whole catfish just like this. They season it up, chuck it in the fryer or pan fry it, and it comes out kind of mushy because it kind of seals in the oil or something. I don't know what it does. But I went down to Mississippi to a restaurant down there called Reed's. It's a little restaurant kind of out of the way. They're only open two or three days a week, and they are packed. They, all, they got the best catfish and the best whole catfish of any that I ate anywhere. And here's their little tip. I'm going to kind of give their secret out to you. When I got my whole catfish, I'm assuming that it's going to be the same little kind of half mushy tasting catfish, but it had slices in it about every inch all the way down to the backbone. Not through the fish, the entire fish, but just to the backbone about every inch. On one side, then they flipped it over, and they cut it all the way down to the backbone on both sides. Like so. And that's how I got my catfish fillet. It almost kind of lets it bend like that little rubber lure you see on TV. And all the breading gets down in each one of them slots and so does the cooking oil. So it doesn't have that one big glob of soft kind of mushy catfish. When this comes out of the deep fryer, you're going to see how neat these are. You can take your fork and just pop these little one inch cubes off the side. Man, you've never tasted catfish so good. And I picked that up at Reed's down in Mississippi at their little restaurant. It was just a slick way to do that. And for some reason, everywhere up north, they don't do that. You get the whole catfish and it just doesn't taste good. Now we're going to do these up like this, a few of them. We're going to throw them in our breading, take them out and put them in the deep fryer. But to go along with that, I went over to a game feed at a church here a while back here in Nashville. And a guy had the best hush puppies I have ever ate. Now, I'm one of these guys, I'm a little thief. I like to get the recipe and give it to you guys. I said, would you send me? Ah, sure, I'll send it to you. I'll email it to you. And darned if he didn't. And it's absolutely terrific. Now we're going to use self-rising flour and we're going to use two types. We're going to use regular self-rising flour and then we're also going to use cornmeal mix or cornmeal flour. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in one cup of the regular flour, all of them self-rising. Remember, it's got to be self-rising. And then we're going to put in three cups of that cornmeal flour or cornmeal mix, they call it. I'm going to put in three cups of this. Man, I am so glad he sent me this recipe. We're going to put in one cup of diced up green bell peppers. We're going to put in about three quarters of a cup, because I just want it for color, of corn. I took some frozen corn out of the freezer here. You can use canned corn, just drain it first and plunk that in there. And that kind of gets to like one or two chunks in every one of those, every one of those little hush puppies. And you know, somebody asked me one time, said, where'd they come up with the name Hush Puppy? Years ago, they used to go hunting with dogs, and they wanted the dog to be quiet, so they'd take a little piece of this dough and fry it, and they'd keep it in their hunting packs. And when the dogs would be yelping and stuff, they'd want to quiet, they'd hand them a little piece of that dough. And that little fried cornmeal, floury little ball of, of yumminess the dogs loved made them hush, so they called them Hush Puppies. Now, ain't that something? We're going to pour in one cup of finely diced onions. We're going to put in one tablespoon of oil, two eggs in there. And we're going to put in about a half a cup of sugar. Oh man, this is really going to be good, trust me. Half a cup of sugar, and then we're going to put in a pinch of, of black pepper. Hey, good looking. Yeah. How do you like to have a little bit of spice in your life? Sounds great. Well then, here, put some of these jalapeno peppers in it. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. She is so sweet, that girl. All right, we're going to put about a tablespoon of diced jalapeno peppers in here. Get them in our bowl. I'm still looking for that spice in my life. Huh? Something else. Now we're going to stir this all together. 
and get our dry ingredients. What we're doing is we're stirring all the dry ingredients together first. And when we get this going, get that all stirred up, get it mixed in. Got our eggs in there, all of our corn, our peppers, our sugar, our two different types of flour. And now we're ready for our buttermilk. I'm going to put some buttermilk in here until it gets to that right texture that we can spoon out a little glob and drop it in our deep fryer. We're going to start out with about a cup just to kind of see how much we need so I can maybe give you a measurement to go by, which works out good for me. Okay, the cup's looking pretty good as you see, but it's still a little dry in there. Make sure you get all the stuff off the bottom. Yeah, that's looking pretty good now that it's working its way around. So I'd say right at around a cup. We might have to add a little touch more, but not much. It's getting pretty good. I don't mix nothing up unless it flies halfway around the kitchen, so don't worry about that over there. That don't count. Here we go. That's looking dandy. This will serve about 10 people in hush puppies or two Steves. Actually it'll serve about 10 folks and I think right at about a cup is pretty good. Look at our texture here. We got this happening now. And What we're going to do is we're going to take this out to the deep fryer. We're going to take almost like a about the size of a quarter or between a quarter and a 50 cent piece. Boy that's just a nice texture right there. Get a little text glob of that like that and then we're just going to thump it off and drop it into the deep fryer just like that. Scoop a little bit up drop it off. About one little kind of a heaping tablespoon at a time, drop it into our deep fryer. We're going to take that out in just a minute, but before we do, I'm going to show you how to make homemade tartar sauce to dredge that catfish through, and you're going to love it. It's yummy. The kids really like it because it's kind of sweet. We're going to use about a cup and a half of mayonnaise and about one cup or three quarters of a cup to a cup of drained sweet relish. Take some sweet pickle relish, but then mash it and drain all the juice out of it so it don't make your stuff too sloppy in there. Let's get that happening. I got it all over me. That's a good thing though. Now you're into it. See how that's looking good? Tartar saucy right there. We're going to put in just a little bit of Cajun seasoning. You can buy this anywhere. Oh man, every time I buy this stuff I forget to take the lid off and open it up. Okay, just a little bit, about a, about a half a tablespoon to be good enough for me. I just want to get a little bit of spice happening in there, not too much. Then, go easy on the mustard, about a teaspoon. That's all you need. A little bit of teaspoon, just give it, it just gives it a nice little golden color. You'll love this tartar sauce, this is good stuff. Then, put in about a half a cup of diced onions in there. Stir them little babies in. Ooh, now we got some texture happening and some flavor. Look at this. Check this out. Is that not a great looking tartar sauce? And I'll tell you what we're going to do. One more little magic ingredient. We're going to put in about a half a teaspoon of lemon juice. This is my recipe by the way. I never took this out of any any book or off the internet or anything like that. And I have just had so many compliments on it. Everybody wants to know how do you make that that good tar tartar sauce. And there it is. Now we've got our catfish sliced up, ready to go. We're going to put that in a regular fish breading. We'll show you that outside. We got our homemade hush puppies, which are absolutely to die for. I'm telling you what, this recipe, once you make it, you'll always make hush puppies like this. And homemade tartar sauce. So when we get back in with our golden brown catfish and hush puppies, we got something to dip it in. Let's take these out now and put them in our deep fryer at about 360 degrees. And I'm going to show you a very unique deep fryer that cooks like no other. Let's take this stuff outside. All right, we brought our catfish outside. We got them all sliced up, ready to go in our breading. I got to tell you about this deep fryer. You can find these at Bass Pro. I know for sure because that's where I got mine. And or you can find them at CajunFryer.com. They're out of Louisiana. This model holds eight and a half gallons of oil. 
And I use cottonseed oil because it doesn't transfer flavors. In other words, you can cook hush puppies, you can cook catfish, you can cook french fries, and you don't get flavors transferring back and forth. This is their three basket model. Now they make several models. They make one with one basket, two baskets, three baskets, and even a six basket model. Let's say if you're having a big fish fry out at a you know carnival or something, you, these are dandy. But the slick thing about this is, is the way it's designed. Down here, this pipe that I got the fire kind of already started ready to go, and I'm going to turn it up in a second. This pipe goes into the oil, turns inside, and goes back. In fact, when you set the basket down in it, it sets on top of that pipe, comes back out and makes its own little exhaust pipe. And that's what heats your oil, is that fire burning through that when you turn it up. But every deep fryer I have ever used is like the little electric models you use on the kitchen counter. When you drop the fish in, the little breading sinks down to the bottom and sits on that little coil and burns up. Or you can buy the little handy dandy ones that are a round burner with a pot sits on oil. It again sinks to the bottom and burns up. This design, this pipe is about 10 inches above where the bottom of the oil is because you see it tapers down, almost looks like a house upside down. In fact, there's the petcock clear down there. That's how far the oil is down. So when I get my fish breading in here and I drop it into my hot grease, of course some of it comes off. It's going to go down, go around that box of heat and sink to the bottom where the oil is cooler below there and it doesn't burn up your fish breading. If you can see, you can see the bottom of the baskets in this oil. This oil has already cooked 10 fish fries and we'll use it all summer long and hardly ever change oil. Once in a while I'll open that petcock, kick some of the little crumblies out, maybe put a little new fresh in because I've cooked so much fish, but you almost never need to change the oil. It's absolutely excellent. It's CajunFryer.com. Let's go ahead and start cooking our catfish here. I need a little breading there from Miss Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. And by the way, speaking of the Miss Sheila, that's where we cook and do all of our cooking shows is aboard the Miss Sheila. And a lot of people think, oh, that's a television set. That's not really a houseboat. Well, we'll get a shot of this. Go ahead and get a shot of this, guys. Here is the boat right here. We're cooking right alongside. This is the Miss Sheila. It is truly an 80-foot houseboat that has, uh, you know, full kitchen facilities inside and all that stuff. And then this is our floating platform alongside we use to grill and cook our other stuff. So going to take these catfish, whole catfish now, not fillets, but we put slits in either side and we're going to tumble them in our, in our fish breading and we do produce our own fish breading, we'll tell you about that someday. And we're going to force that breading into the side in these little slots, get that breading down in those little cracks that we cut in the side of there. And, and by the way, don't cut the tails off because they're so crunchy. I love those. And I'm going to turn this back up. It's about 340 degrees. That's another thing I love about this Cajun fryer. It sounds like an F-16 fighter. And it lets my neighbors know I'm having a fish fry and then they all show up to have fish. This is pretty close. If you'll check out this gauge, it, don't, it only takes about, from completely cold, this model here, eight and a half gallons, only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to heat up and you're ready to cook. And uh, we're pretty close. We're at about 350, 360. But at 360 degrees, you drop your whole catfish in there. Lay them little dudes down in there. And remember, get that breading down in them little cracks. And the first thing that's going to happen is your catfish is going to sink to the bottom. So all you're going to see is bubbles. And to make sure they get done all the way, they got to come back to the surface, float back to the surface, so you can see them floating on top, and then leave them floating on top for about two minutes. Then you'll have nice, flaky catfish. Because I'm going to change over to my hush puppies right now. Sheila, if you'll hand me the hush puppies. Thank you, babe. I'm just going to cook a couple of those catfish. I know the camera guys are going to make me cook the rest of them as soon as we turn the cameras off because they love catfish. Now this is that hush puppy mix that we made inside. I'm going to get us a little spoonful of that and just drop it in there. Be careful around this oil. Remember, it's 360 degrees, so it will burn you. That one there is going to be a little odd shape, but you just dip out a little bit on your spoon, about the size of a 50 cent piece, drop it in there. You can kind of shape them into a little bit of a ball there. 
get these babies, kind of turn them a little bit. Just kind of take your tongs and whatever side is brown, turn it up. And our catfish is on the surface, ta-da! We're going to leave it there for just a couple minutes, remember. Then we're going to take you in and show them. You're going to watch these hush puppies, don't let them get away on you. See our catfish floating? It happens all of a sudden. One minute you'll be over here eating hush puppies like you don't have any sense, and next minute you look over and your catfish are on the surface. Both of these are on top. They've been on there about a minute. I'm going to give them one more minute, and I'm going to show you how flaky that catfish is. Whole catfish. I think our cat are done. Let me pull these out. There we go. Look how nice and golden brown them are. And they've been on the surface now only about a minute and a half to two minutes once they start floating. Lay them on paper towels. You need a lot of paper towels. Make sure you put paper towels on your pans. Don't just put them on a regular pan so they sit in their own oil. You want this stuff to drain into your paper towels. Hush puppies are doing good. My neighbors are lined up over there I see already because they've been listening to that little rocket engine. My little F-16 grease cooker. And we're done. Man, oh man, I can see the camera guys nodding their head. It is time to break for lunch. When you're done, spray the inside of your lid of your cooker and inside with cooking spray. Close it down, and you don't need to do anything else. That oil stays in there. You don't have to change it. And you can three weeks later, three months later, you come out, fire it up. You're ready to cook in your Cajun fryer. Look at our hush puppies and our whole catfish. Let's take them inside and do a little sampling. What do you say? Let's go. Just got back in from the deep fryer. The Cajun fryer did us proud. Check this out. Our hush puppies are golden brown. Our catfish are just golden brown. And don't throw these tails away. Don't cut these tails off. Ever since I was catching yellow belly bullheads up in Iowa, I love this part. Mm, these are like bacon. That is the best flavor. They are so good. Sorry about that. But here we go. I'm going to plate this up for you because I can't stand it no more. Get me a nice glass of tea. Go with this. A couple, three of my nicest golden brown hush puppies. And I want to show you the secret here. I'm going to turn this around just for a second and show you how. Let, let me move these hush puppies over just for a second because I want to show you this. Watch how this happens. You just slide your fork in there. Pop that off. Bite size at a time. It comes right off. Look at that. Bite size at a time. Could not be a better display for catfish. And all you got to do is just take your fork and scoot them right off the bone. Notice there's no grease in behind there. They're white and flaky and tender. Crisp on the outside. Oh, it's missing something. I'm missing something. I know what I need. I know what I need. Did you bring me something? I did. I brought you some tartar sauce. That's right. This is our homemade tartar sauce. We made this the other day. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, babe. We made this the other day. And remember, we used mayonnaise, pickled relish, a little bit of lemon juice, and some mustard. Whipped it up. They even put a little Cajun seasoning in there. So all we need now to go with our wonderful meal here is a dollop of our homemade tartar sauce, our hush puppies, and our bite-at-a-time catfish. Mm. Gotta have a hush puppy. Hold on. I gotta show you these little dudes. Listen, I wish you could hear that. Can, I don't know if you picked that up, but I could hear it up here. Crunchy on the outside, and just as that is not moist on the inside and mushy, they are flaky and delicious. This hush puppy recipe that this guy sent me is terrific. And if you'll cook them like that, mm. they're sweet. They got the corn in there, they got the little green peppers. Delicious on the outside. What could be better than a meal like this? Catfish, a bite at a time, even though it's whole catfish. We even got a little coleslaw in there. Homemade tartar sauce and hush puppies. Try it at your next hunting camp. And by the way, that Cajun fryer is portable because it runs on a propane tank. Is this the best whole catfish and hush puppy recipe you'll ever eat anywhere? Boy, if it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall saying, see you next time. Thank you very much. I'd like to keep talking, but i got to get back to eating. This is too good. Lunchtime, everybody. Come get some. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching Cooking with Shotgun Red. If you enjoy our recipes, become a subscriber to our cooking channel, and you'll be the first to know when a new recipe is posted. 
We'll see you next time, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. This is Shotgun Red saying thanks a lot. Wow.